Hey y'all, it's Amanda and welcome back to my channel. And today we're gonna do the one tag to rule them all, a Lord of the Rings book tag that Celestria and Holly from Lola Day with Holly created. I will leave both of their videos down below. Love them so much. They collaborated and created this original tag. So if you wanna do this video, please do it. If you are the Tolkien lover, you need to do this because this is the best tag and it's perfect to do during the middle earth readathon month which is happening during october that reese over the writing songbird created and i am helping co-host so i will leave all the information on that readathon as well down below and the co-hosts are holly of course from the holly sarah from sarah's tangle tales and myself and so yeah i love the prompts i've got them written out over here the first part of this video you're going to just see me talking about the books because i got them all over here because i got multiple books for the answers you know what i'm saying <laughs> book of romantic fashion um and then at the end there's like a part two and the hubs he'll be here okay you can tell we're gonna do it me and him gonna have to do a thumbnail so you can tell he's gonna be in this and he's got tons of middle earth merch i also have a lot myself from where we had that middle earth wedding uh in 2016. without further ado let's get into the tag first question is or prompt is hobbits a character who is a real homebody so I decided to pull out a book that I read a while back, actually, and that is The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. This is a really great uh, Christmas read. It's clean. It's not Christian, but it is clean. And I don't think the the another book, the other Christmas book by her that came out on it was last year. I tried to read another Christmas book by her, and I didn't love it, but I ended up being definite and selling it. But this one really was clean. I've kept it. One of my few book of the month books that I really enjoyed. And there is one of the sisters in here that kind of swap lives, right? But one of them is very introverted and just a real homebody and just wants to work at like her parents' bakery and just live a very simple life. And so they swap lives and her other sisters like on TV show, I want to say it was just the whole thing. And there's just cute, cute romances in this and lots of good food and everything described in this. And I love the cover. It shows the bakery and all the stuff. So this was just a really great Christmas read. It will be in my Christmas recommendations video at some point, but if you're looking for a good Christmas read, I highly recommend this one, okay? And we've got prompt number two, and that's elves, a character that does not age normally. Now, I don't own any, any of these books anymore. I don't know if I'm going to continue on in the series, just depending on some of my convictions. We'll see. But I'm definitely not watching the show anymore because it's pretty much ruined, and some of the content was a bit much for me. But Geralt from The Witcher. Okay, if you've watched this, Henry Cavill was The Witcher. Netflix pretty much butchered the show. And uh, I mean, I liked part of season one and then part of season two was okay, but most of it wasn't. And then three was really bad. I didn't even watch it. So yeah, and then he's leaving, if you didn't know. And now he's going to be replaced by, what's his name? Liam Hemsworth. <laughs> so it's a no for me, but Geralt in the actual books, I did read actually the first book, The Last Wish, I want to say it's called. It had like all of the little short stories. And I remember liking the audiobooks at the time. Like it's very interesting. It's definitely secular fantasy. I can't remember content. I mean, I'm sure there's like definitely violence and stuff in it, but like I can't really remember all of the things in there. I'm sure there's language and stuff. So again, I don't know if I'll ever go back to it, honestly. But he's the only one I could think of out of all the books. I was on my Goodreads going through my list of everything that I've read. And I'm like trying to figure out an answer for this. <laughs> so he's the only one I had, you know, that uh, they age slowly. Witchers age slowly. And so he could be like a century old despite looking much younger from what I found on Google as well to confirm that. So I was like, is that right? I'm pretty sure. And I had to look it up. So he was the only one I had for this, okay? Besides the elves in Lord of the Rings, right? So yeah, we're moving on. Uh, and then, <laughs> then uh, we've got dwarves, a stubborn or very loyal character. All right, now y'all know Fern from The Good Sister is the ultimate loyal sister. She's almost loyal to a fault. Okay, and if you haven't seen my vlog, me going over the how much I love Sally Hepworth's good, The Good Sister, 
I will link it down below. It, it blew my mind. I buddy read this with Chrissy, Lindsay, and Sky. We had the best time just talking through this and just like our minds being blown. And we all gave it five stars. Highly recommend. There's some language and a couple of unsettling scenes, but not much. And uh, I just, I'll leave my review down below as well so you can kind of see in details. But this is a secular, um, basically psychological thriller, but it's more so like family drama oriented more than anything. It didn't have anything that was really triggering to me, except for a couple of scenes that were like, um, you know, the parental abuse that they had had at one point and some things there uh, in explained in journal entries, okay? And so uh, that's all I'll say. I don't want to like get to, into spoilers or anything. So that that's just something I'll mention. But um, other than that, it really was like you could easily skip over that. And the story itself is just so good. And the twist that this takes wow i just didn't see it i'm not much of a thriller reader i don't want anything that's gonna be too explicit and this was like right up my alley honestly so yeah i highly recommend this fern is just the best character i love her and she is very loyal i mean the whole point of this story is she's wanting she is neurodivergent and her her sister rose they're twin sisters and her sister rose can't get pregnant so fern's like oh i'm gonna go find a guy and get pregnant so that i can like help her have a baby like that's how loyal this girl was or is to her sister you know what i'm saying like it's just she's loyal to rose to a fault and the things that happen are crazy so yeah i love this book then we have a uh, race of men a book with diversity in it and I really tried to think about this. And I feel like Assassin's Apprentice, Robin Hobb, I feel like Fitz, it, the, Fitz is our main character, but like I feel like every character in here was so different. And just, I feel like she's really populated this story with a very uh, diverse cast, very fascinating. I really enjoyed this. I also feel like Warbreaker from Brandon, by Brandon Sanderson would be an honorable mention as well. Like they just have the best group of characters, so different, different types of people and kingdoms and I don't know that was my answer but I really tried to look through all my the books I have read and you know it's hard for me to remember that sort of thing honestly wizards a wise character and so I ended up picking Mrs. Kip from the extraordinary desk of Mrs. Kip by Sarah Brunsfold you asked me for a wise character she's my go-to okay uh, she just she's telling us all about her life and we know she's dying but she is going not going to leave this earth without letting us have some more of her wisdom before she leaves and it's just truly beautiful I will link I have a whole review video for this if you've not seen it from last year I will link it down below it was just the best one of the best books I read last year I truly truly loved it and it still sticks with me today the next prompt is Gollum a book with a sympathetic villain I spent forever on this. I finally asked Miriam if this made sense and she agreed with me. So we here. Okay, I needed some confirmation. Uh, if you only read book one, this may not seem like a good answer, but if you read book two, you know where I'm going. So you from Mark of the Lion trilogy, well, book one and two. Uh, that's all I could say. She's very broken inside. She's a very bitter character. She's went through a lot. You know, there are moments you can't stand her, and there are, there are moments that you do feel sympathy for her, and that's all I will say. If you read it, do you agree with me? I, I think so. We've got Eagles, a book with an animal in the plot. And the first one I thought about was A Boy Called Bat, and that's where there's an autistic boy named Bixby, and he takes care of a baby skunk from his mom, and she's a veterinarian. And it's just a really sweet story, middle grade story. But the second thing, the ones I actually own, because that was one I borrowed from the library. Um, in here, <laughs> you already know this is coming, didn't you? All the books in the Gone to the Dog series, okay? Absolutely love these. They all feature great pups. We love to see it. Awesome dogs. So book one is off the chain. Love it. The book two is Dog Days of Summer by Kathleen. This is Kathleen Yabarbo and Janice Thompson, I should say. They alternate. Book three is Barking Up the Wrong Tree. Book four is The Bark of Zorro. And I still need to read book five and six. So book five is Every Dog Has His Day. And book six is New Leash on Life. So, yeah. I love this series. They are just the cutest, cozy mysteries. They do not have any deaths in them. So if that's important to you, this is just pure, like, mystery, intrigue, like... You know, is someone vandalizing something? Who did this? There's a dog missing. You know, there's some odd spray-painted dogs. Things like that ha happen in here. One, there's dog rescues. It's just a really great series. 
and it's cute, clean, Christian. It's just this is the perfect reads for the fall, in my opinion. So um, I, I've rated them all four stars when I've read them. They've just been like that good palette cleanse of a good story to read, and I highly recommend this uh, series. It's a good Christian cozy mystery series that if you're not someone who wants to have any kind of murder in a book, this is perfect for you because it doesn't have anything like that. It's just so adorable with all the dogs. I, I love it. So yeah, the dogs are always the main part of the plot. So that's a, the, that's the main one I thought about. We've got ba Bayorn, a character with a mistaken or alternate identity. This was also very hard for me, but I ended up with Finley Donovan is killing it because this is secular, um, mystery it does have some language and a little bit more of the sexual innuendos that some may may or may not be un be comfortable with i was okay with it i've heard book two i haven't read book two i've heard that's a little bit more but i had a great time reading this nonetheless uh, when i did read it i can't remember if it's like three and a half four stars i did have a good time with this but um this <laughs> our main girl finley is like the author and she's overheard saying stuff about her mystery book that she is writing while she's out to eat or something. I can't remember exactly, but they basically somebody overhears her and says she is someone they can hire to murder somebody. And so that's all mistaken and all messed up because she is not, <laughs> she's like, I'm an author, I can't do this. And yeah, she kind of takes them up on the offer because of the amount of money, she needs money. And this guy's a really bad guy. And she's like, uh, maybe I should try to help. And then like things start happening where like, she's like in the middle of a murder that actually takes place, it's a whole thing. And so, um, yeah, she, <laughs> It's just things go downhill real quick from this misunderstanding. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, then we've got Morgoth, a sinister character. Honey, look, Nancy Mail coming in on this because she has got some sinister characters. Okay. Cold Pursuit and Nightfall. I don't, I don't know who's worse. Because in Nightfall, we got this guy who's wanting to use a virus to weaponize a virus. And, um, like try to fulfill some cult prophecy and be crazy. And he was very sinister. Like he was willing to kill anybody. You know, he, he was like a serial killer. But then we got in this cold pursuit, you, you kind of do feel, hey, you do feel a little bit of sympathy for him. I did feel, a, now that I remember that, I kind of did because, man, I just remembered that. Okay, hey, he's also kind of a sympathetic villain. Uh, Brian, what's his name? Brian, wasn't it? I think his name was Brian, the, the guy in here. He has schizophrenia and synesthesia and has so much going on mentally that he needs help and he's, he's not getting help he needs. And so, like, it's almost like you feel a little bit of empathy for him because of what he needed help for, but he's also killing people because of his mental illness. And so, it doesn't excuse that at all, but you also do feel a little bit of sympathy for him. But he is very sinister. He's crazy. He out here putting... Uh, messing up the water trying to like drug people and he he killing people just from like if they look at him wrong he's crazy but he's also has a mental illness as well so uh that's a little bit different than this so i don't know who's worse honestly maybe this one because he's trying to like kill half the po kill, kill a third of the population okay uh so yeah probably him um but yeah nancy mail knows how to write a villain i will say so I have really enjoyed both of these books and they are a bit unsettling. So just take that with a grain of salt. They are Christian though and they have faith, good faith content usually. We've got Mary and Pippin, an iconic duo. So I had a hard time with this. I don't know why. I, I really did. I looked and looked and I was like, I don't know. I mean, now that I'm kind of looking, a lot of the romantic suspense books I've read, I feel like do have good duos where they're working together. Like, I do feel like in um, Edge of Dusk, uh, John and, a oh, what's her name, Annie? Annie, yeah, Annie Peterson. <laughs> Look at me. I ain't remembering. Uh, we let us see it. Um, I do feel like John and Annie were a really good duo. They worked well together. That was the second chance of romance, and that's one I really enjoyed. So, I, will, I do think that they worked really well together. But I ended up still saying, I think Finley and Vera in this crack me up. Like, one of them's driving a van, running around, being crazy. Like, it's funny. The Ring. The next prop. Okay, I'm all of us. The Ring. A book with a significant object as part of the plot. And wouldn't you know, I found a book that had a ring. Yeah. A novel proposal by Denise Hunter. A ring, an engagement ring, is a big part of this plot. They, our main girl, she is on the beach and in this duplex. 
and there's a guy next door okay we love to say it but uh she's there to try to kind of get away and get some like inspiration for her writing writing her novel she's there she ends up doing like a little free library and somebody leaves like a book in her little free library that has like a secret compartment in it and it has this engagement ring in it and so her and the guy next door what's his name uh her name was sadie and his name was sam yep it's so, <laughs> names but um they end up working together trying to figure out whose lost engagement ring it was so that was a big part of the plot in this one i really like this i give us four stars this is a good one Hobbiton, a book showing a simple quiet lifestyle okay i do feel like as far as cozy mysteries go um, a Salted Caramel by Amanda Flower had like this really simple life of the Amish shown of her grandparents. Our main girl's not Amish. She's in New York, but she comes back after living this lavish lifestyle at JP Chocolates in New York City. She is um, back home in Ohio for with her grandparents, and it's just such a beautiful, simple, simple type of life. Up until there's a murder, of course. But I just have to say, like the whole setting there was so just beautiful. Like you can just see how simple kind of life this was. It's an Amish candy shop. I absolutely loved it. It had a little bit of faith in it. It's not, I don't think, I don't know if it's Christian or not, but like it does have faith in it because they're Amish and they do talk about God. So I really appreciate that and it's completely clean. So I need to continue on in this series because I really enjoyed it. So and that kind of come to mind. And then I felt like even in Fairest of Heart, okay, look at me putting these in order. I've done a good job. I try to put these in order of the questions, honey. I normally don't do that. Uh, but Fairest of Heart by Karen Whitmire. I love this book. Five stars. It's one of my favorites of the year. I feel like before like things kind of get crazy, crazy for our main girl here where they're trying to find her and all this stuff I feel like when she meets up with all the like little seven grandfather figures in that small town it just seems so cute and quiet uh, and just simple and I love that so that was what I thought about as well the next prompt is the fellowship found family so I have got Autumn by the Sea by Melissa Tag. this has the best setting characters i loved it i gave it four to four and a half stars it was so good and i can't wait for book two i've got all three books on my shelves and i don't know when i'll read book two i keep saying i'm gonna read it and i haven't been getting to it but no oshina just recently read it as well and gave it five stars so just so glad that so many people are loving this book because this is first introduced to me by Bailey over at Bailey's bookshelf. We have this main guy, Neil, and he's from Scotland and he has pretty much been adopted into this family and they are trying to find this missing granddaughter for um, Maggie and she's been looking forever of what happened to her granddaughter and they think maybe this girl Sydney could be her but they don't know and so Sydney's kind of brought into Muir Blueberry Farm at Muir Harbor trying to just get to know these people and they truly felt like a found family she starts feeling like she really is part of their family and it's just a really great story you know you know you don't know if she is the long lost granddaughter or not but either way she really finds herself feeling like she is part of the family regardless and i love that and the romance in this was so cute so i highly recommend this for if you love good book with found, fa found family this is a great one and it's christian so love that so next on the list is the two towers a book with a significant landmark in the story or setting and i had to pick gabrielle myers okay when the day comes and uh in this moment y'all know that i have raved about these books and love them they are christian historical fiction or historical romance um and they are like time travel so highly or highly recommend these by the way but <laughs> if you haven't seen me talk about it you know these books have a lot of historical landmarks like in this one she is in uh, colonial williamsburg in the 1700s you know there's a lot of landmarks there and then we're in 1914 in the gilded age there's a lot of landmarks in this book and then in book two there was three timelines and one of them was like 9 11 so you knew in dc there was a ton of those landmarks and the other one was 1861 and there was, um, she was a daughter of like a senator in the outbreak of the Civil War. And then in 1941, um, she was at Pearl, getting on a hospital ship for Pearl Harbor. These have huge historical landmarks. It's my favorite, but I still really like book two. They both were five stars and I can't wait for book three, okay? Turn of the King, a book with a royalty element. All right, now y'all see these sitting over here. I got all these for that, okay? There's a lot of royalty books that I have read, but the first ones that come to mind are A Noble Masquerade by Christy Ann Hunter. Definitely that that awesome Regency vibe. It definitely gives me that royalty feeling. Uh, there's like a duke and all this stuff. So, hey, yeah, we here. And then we've got A Lady's Guide to Fortune Hunting. I'm not reading book two, by the way, of this. 
no the content was a no but uh book one is clean so if you want to read it go ahead uh but uh so sophie Irwin. i don't know if i said her name but um this i really enjoy this got four stars it's kind of like a clean version of bridgerton people say i've never watched bridgerton i've seen previews i can see what they're saying um but uh this was about this girl kitty and she needs a fortune basically and there you go uh it was just all kinds of stuff she needs a husband with a fortune and so i ended up really enjoying this and like i said gave it four stars um uh, but tons of royalty stuff going on in here okay then we've got all of the what must I say? <laughs> Fairy tale retellings from uh, Melanie Dickerson. Okay, is that? Yeah, that's that's right. Um, this is the Derricotte Tales, and so these were the first books I ever read by her. I don't own book one because it wasn't my favorite, but books two through five. Yeah, two through five. <laughs> Try to count two through five here. So I don't know. They're not even in order. This is two, three, three four five i think <laughs> anyway um all of these books in the dare cocktails though they kind of deal with regency royalty kind of that um kings and knights and queens and courts and all that stuff usually somebody is like they're ya so a lot of times they do feel like ya but they are a good time good palate cleanse and a lot of times it's like okay they, the dad wants her to get married off somebody she don't want to she runs off that's usually what happens meets, meets her man and so um, they're just a good time so yeah i always really enjoy those this silk now i can't never say this holly did good i was like i didn't remember how to say that when she's when i say it now here i am i don't know how to say it S similar similar <laughs> <laughs> the Silmarillion. Silmarillion. Okay. Uh, I don't know. A book that spans many years. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself because I kept saying seal like six times. Um, <laughs> the Circus Train by Amita Parikh. I think it's like her name, whatever. This is another book of the month book that I ended up really enjoying. And uh, this was a great historical fiction. It's just full of family drama. I don't know if family drama, but like, yeah, I guess there is family drama. I'm not saying. Um, full of that and circus elements and, you know, World War II stuff going on. Our main girl is disabled, so you have some disability representation. She has polio. And, you know, she finds a little bit of romance and so, uh, someone that they rescue, a Jewish boy that they rescue. And, I mean, he becomes, like, he has, the guy, Alexander, he ends up working with um, the girl's dad uh, in, in the circus. And things kind of go on from there. I don't really want to say too much. But it does span, like, from the 30s, I want to say, to the 50s. I didn't write that down. Yeah. 1938, and I want to say it ended up somewhere in the 50s or so. So, um, this spanned a lot of years, okay? And it's not Christian, but it is clean from what I remember. I don't even remember any language. There might have been one word, but, like, I felt like it was clean. So, we good. Um, and then we've got Potatoes. <laughs> A book with memorable food. I did feel like a Santa Carmel has some good memorable stuff because it's got all the candies and stuff at the shop. But the first one that always comes to mind is going to be Death by Bubble Tea and Hot Pot Murder. These are uh, Cozy Mysteries by Jennifer Chow. I love them. LA Night Markets. I mean, look at these covers. There's so much food going on here. Bubble tea stuff here with her little stall. And then, of course, here we've got Hot Pot. All of the different cultural foods in this book. So good. Uh, it always makes me want to eat. <laughs> So, yeah, these are my go-tos whenever that kind of question comes up in a tag. When you say, what's a book of food that makes you want to eat? Is this. I also feel like Valerie Burns, you know, the um, two-part sugar has like a chocolate cake recipe. Loved it. It made me really want chocolate cake. Like, there's all kinds of good stuff that's got memorable food. I don't usually remember food, except in cozies. I don't know uh, but um then we've got all that is gold does not glitter a character who is more incredible on the inside than they seem at first now first off i thought about mr darcy right off okay prime prejudice if you know you know like what he was truly like inside versus his portrayal like on the outside and how like stubborn and rough around the edges he was and like what he did for her and all this stuff 
Come on. He is so much more incredible on the inside, honey, than he first appears, right? Um, and then, speaking of Pride and Prejudice, I had to throw in Mary Bennett from the other Bennett sister, Janice Hadlow. I love this book this year. It really blew me away, so I had to have me a physical copy of it because I listened to the audio of it, but I had to own it because I will never see Mary Bennett the same again. Like, this was such a good story that just made you think all about Mary Bennett and what it, her story could have been like. And, like, the true story. I feel like this is her story. Like, nobody's gonna tell me different. This is how she, this is what she happened to her. This is what happened. So, um, yeah, she was so much more incredible inside in this book than I never really thought about her in the, in the Pride and Prejudice or the movies until I read this book. So good. More questions and then we'll get blank. Uh, <laughs> you shall not pass. A series that shouldn't have continued as far as it did. Example, like books one and two were great, book three and beyond were awful, etc. And honestly, I don't, I don't know. Like I, I thought about it, and the only thing I come up with was Susan May Warren's uh, Sky King Ranch series. Like I really did like book one and two, and three was just not for me. I ended up giving it two stars. It was like a virus storyline as well that I was not here for. So. um but it was like all about it versus, you know, Nancy Mills was fine. It was a very small portion of it. This was all about it. And it just like, I was not here for that really. So yeah, that's the only one I could think of. I think that it just book one or two was fine. Um, but I ended up getting rid of all three of them because I don't plan to reread them. They were good, but like, yeah, I don't plan to reread them. So, um, then we've got, I am no man, a book with an unexpected twist. Well, I also had to say, I can't remember who said it, if it was Holly or Celestria, one of them said, Heart of Red, Blood of Blue by Rebecca Belliston. I need to get me a copy of that. Twist in that I did not see at all. I was like, what? I mean, plot twist left and right. You want to talk about that? But I also feel like The Good Sister, I'm not going to get it out again because it's like at the bottom of the stack, but that had some big plot twists as well that I did not see coming. So, uh, yeah, that was really great. And the last question is Rings of Power. A controversial book. <laughs> now, I do not read a lot of controversial books. I did like what Holly had said. She kind of said Redeeming Love was uh, one. Um, I really liked her answer. That That's so true. It, it is pretty controversial in the Christian market. But for me, I had looked back at the books that I had read even before I started reading Christian fiction, right? And for me, when I look back, what are the controversial books that I have read, right? I think Daisy Jones and the Six, I listened to it. It was three and a half stars when I listened to it. Now, I don't know that I could even listen to it, but that was when it first came out. And I did really like the audiobook at the time, but I was a different reader at the time too. So that's hard to say, but um, there's a lot of language, drugs, sex, you know, all that stuff, like it's interview style and uh, lots of drama. It's just, it's very, it's very controversial. So, um, I didn't watch the show. I, wasn't, I just wasn't into it. I, it was okay. Like I said, I remember liking it at the time, but like, I will probably not read it today. You know what I'm saying? And then It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I did used to read a lot of Colleen Hoover back in the day. I did like It Ends With Us, but like now what I, I don't know. You know, again, I'm just such a different reader today than I was two years ago to even last year. So... That's a pretty controversial book, too. It deals with domestic violence. I don't, I don't read her anymore. No. Of course, you know, Outlander is pretty controversial in many different ways. You know, that was my favorite series for a really long time. And the time has kind of passed on my love and nostalgia. It's more nostalgia now than anything. But, you know, if another book comes out, book 10 is supposed to be in the works. Yeah, I'll probably read it to see what happens. But, you know, um, and she has cut back on some of the explicit stuff, thankfully. But compared to the earlier books, but still, it's still pretty controversial with a lot of the stuff she puts in there. And there's a lot of stuff in there I don't agree with at all. So, um, yeah. The next section is gonna be with Blake. I'll have to get him at some point to come in here and we'll film this next part. But this is gonna be the additional hardcore Tolkien fan questions. I'll be back. Your boy is back. <laughs> I know you miss me. <laughs> hey y'all. Okay, we back. We are back in business. All right, part two of this tag is the additional hardcore Tolkien fan questions. So you know I had to bring the hubs in, okay? Because we got lots of merch. He collects Lord of the Rings cards. First off, <laughs> check out my sword. Uh, look up really close. There's some orc blood on this somewhere. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. It's got orc blood on it right there. What? And then you got the elvish. But yeah, it's got a little bit of rust on it. But anyways. Hey, we love to see it. Aragorn's this sword. Is, uh, yeah, Anduril. We got Aragorn's sword. Love to see it. Now, that's the part that we're supposed to be filming later. <laughs> Shop, there that's you go. That's question number five. <laughs> anyways, there you go. Uh, yeah, that's question number six. Hey, little spoiler there. We, we, got, we got the sword. Okay, so... Number one, what character do you personally connect to the most? I'll let you go first. Ladies first. <laughs> I like Bilbo. I feel like for him, I'm a lot like him because similar to what Celestia just said, I'm a big homebody. And, you know, he just chilling. He just want to live his best life in the, in the Shire. And that's what I want to do. So uh, be simple life and live a simple life and everything. I'm a lot. I, I connect a lot with Bilbo as well, just because he's pretty much an introvert you know he doesn't like people touching his things in his house and I'm a lot like that like your boy can be outgoing but you know a lot of times I like to just be kind of like you know by myself by, by yourself yeah. yeah I don't know I think like a lot of people are that way but sometimes I just need my space <laughs> yeah you know. we're anyways both, we're both the same on that yeah. just in different ways um question number two what's your favorite and least favorite thing about Middle Earth my favorite thing is the immersive world it's it's just beautiful. I mean, Rivendell, the Shire, those are my favorite places in Middle Earth. Um, and then my least favorite is definitely the spiders and the orcs. Yeah, that's enough for me. <laughs> what about you? I mean, I, I love my favorite thing about it is really the fantasy, just how deep you know, how deep of a fantasy vibe it gives, I guess. And my least favorite uh, part about Middle Earth is. Probably the fact that Mordor even exists. Um, yeah. I know that's part of, you know, you got the protagonist, antagonist, but the fact that it even exists at all is kind of, it, it's what ruins the the beautiful, you know, the beautiful yeah. world of Middle Earth. Well, like I you're guess. in the Fellowship and it has all that beauty and then we cut to the darkness real quick, you mm -hmm. know, like in that movie. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I got to cut this off. My key can't watch this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. All right. Yeah, it is very in-depth fantasy world. Um. Number three, what is your favorite character, or who is your favorite character? Aragorn, uh, because reasons, but I mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but uh, first off, Aragorn, he has such a transformation into being king. We just love, I love seeing that, the whole transformation. Him and, him and Arwen, we love to see it. Like, everything in that is just my favorite of all time. What are you doing? <laughs> all right, so uh, I just started bringing this back over here. <laughs> I don't have a... That's because I was talking about... <laughs> Aragorn. Well, I was going Also, but I mean, the true winner of the entire Fellowship and really all the Lord of the Rings movies is Sam. Let's just be real. Sam, Frodo wouldn't have made it, honey. He would not have made it. Uh, let's be real. He knew, he knew what... Um, Sam was taking care of your boy. He okay? was taking care of your boy. Uh, and let me just say, he knew Gollum. He was, he knew Gollum was up to no good. Like, mm -mm. And so he would not have made it for the whole, he kept things going for the whole plot. What's your favorite? Who's your favorite character? You shall not pass. <laughs> I don't have a staff, so I use the sword. Anyway. I didn't know you I'll, do that. I, I, I'll let you guys, uh, figure out who that character is. I know you're smart enough to figure anyway. <laughs> I didn't know you was going to do that. But yeah, no, Gan or yeah, Gandalf is such a, you know, great character. He's got a lot of wisdom, you know, over the years. And you know, you could say he's courageous as well. And yeah. um, just he the, fought the, Balrog. I the, mean, the fact that if you go back to the Hobbit and he like basically, you know, Pulled. shows Bill, yeah, takes Bilbo out of his comfort zone. Yeah. That's kind of what I was trying to yeah. say. Uh, and then even in the fellowship, he was always a great mentor and guy, you know, so I mean, who doesn't like Gandalf? Sorry. Anyways. We'd like to say it. Yeah. Gandalf is definitely my favorite character. I love all of them. All of them really. Like Mary and Pippin are hilarious, but like Aragorn, <laughs> something about it. I also really like Gimli and Legolas. Like their, their friendship was really nice. Going back to Aragorn. Yeah. Aragorn is also another character that I really like, you know, as far as definitely being courageous. She's a female character, maybe. I like Arwen. <sighs> Yeah, R one's probably. But Galadriel, hey, don't mess with her, okay, honey. Okay, Galadriel and R one are probably one too, as yeah. far as the actual lore and the yeah. uh, Lord of the Rings. Aowen, so. she's probably third. Okay, she's third. She's not. <laughs> she's not top two. He is so high, Aowen. No, no, she's not. I mean, she's like top. You know, she's, top, she's number three, maybe. I don't know. All right. Uh, 
hey, I, my, I didn't really like that one either. But the only part was when she said, I am no man. Okay, that's it. I was like, go, go, get it. Anyway, <laughs> so number, what was it, four? I think we're on four. Uh, is it? Okay. Yeah. How many of Tolkien's books have you read? Well, <laughs> four points. I've read like. 30% of The Hobbit, and I haven't read any of the other books. He's Sadly. not a reader, but, but hey. I am strongly into the lore of Lord of the Rings. You know, All right. Collecting and uh, the he characters. He I likes know. the movies. He collects a lot of the merch. Okay, we here. He's a fan. Um, I got all my books here on the back because reasons. But I've read The Hobbit. Read The Hobbit. Okay. There's a cover there. And I've read The Fellowship. Read it last year. And then this month, I just finished up The Two Towers. So good. I was really surprised how much I liked that. And then next is The Return of the King this month. Mm. Gotta read that this month. Best movie ever, right there. I yeah, love the title. Yeah, what's your favorite movies then? Uh, yeah. So, well, Fellowship and Return of the King. Are my Two Towers is probably my least favorite because it's a lot of, if you, you know, even the book or probably movie, it's a lot of, it's That's filler. The same. Yeah, I feel it's like. It's a lot of filler. The, I, the but, things I didn't like about Two Towers was I felt like, we went on and on and on with Frodo and Sam and Gollum. Yeah, I feel but like in the book it really wasn't like that too much to me. I feel like sometimes in the journey, it's you're, you you kind of get like the tower, two towers. You kind of get lost in that journey a little bit, but, and then they find themselves in the yeah. But my favorite parts are like the stuff with Mary Pippin, Treebeard, mm -hmm. you know, in the two towers. Treebeard, that stuff was cool. The ants, all that stuff, really neat. Yeah, that's cool. You get you get to know those characters. And um. <clears throat> Then I've got this other book here I need to read. Oh. Encyclopedia of Tolkien. I don't even you know if I've seen that. Let me see that. No, Dang. I didn't. I, Look at this. I did not show it. Actually, like, say below to see it. Look at this thing right here. It's yeah. pretty cool. Then this is called The Fall of Numenor. Oh, look, it's even got gold pages. Ooh, fancy. This will be cool. What? These yeah. may be kind of oh, long-winded yeah, long to read. I don't know. So are there pictures in here? Or just, so it's all, oh, it just explains. Oh, yeah, look at the front. The Balrog's on the front. Uh, Isn't it? Inside. The inside page. Oh, I was like, what? That yeah, that's the Balrog. Yeah, you're right. That, I was like, this first part's not. Anyway, how you say this? Huh? Sil, how you say the it? Silmarillion. Hold on. The Silmarillion? Silmarillion. I struggled to say it. The Silmarillion. Really? I've heard it's really hard to read, but yeah. I do have a nice edition with green pages. Okay. Me and my, my spending habits. Um, This was my original edition that I had whenever we took our wedding pictures with it. You know, because we've got this little. I'm I'm really going off long off key here. Amanda tried to get me to read that, so she just tells everybody I'm a big reader. So there you go. <laughs> we took these in our engagement pictures when I had blonde hair with these books. Uh, so yeah, uh, Blake, we know you didn't read it, but it's fine. I didn't read it either. I can pretend I read it, so I mean, it's fine. Then I've got this box set, and I got for like twenty bucks, and it's like all the side stories, great tales of Middle Earth. Will I read these? I don't know. But hey, I, I'm almost done with Return of the King. Then I can focus on other things. Yeah. Anyway, hey, we, my computer went to sleep. Hold on. Uh -oh. right, now, five. that's it. So basically, I've read those. He, he's not really a reader, but we hear. Um, and number then, five. number five, how do you feel about, oh, this is a good one. How do you feel about the Peter Jackson movies first? Let's talk about that. I think they are, the extended editions are some of the best movies ever made. Like, I, they are comfort movies. Yeah, I think he did a really good job kind of tying to the books. You know, a lot of times you'll watch a movie and you're like, oh, that's not what, nothing like the book, right? Now, ten times, I don't normally read the book, so I can't compare it. But as far as the story, the characters, and the, you know, the the props, everything you use is just fantastic. Yeah. I mean, just over the years, it's just an iconic Well, I think where I read the first two books, that I think that he did a really good job. Like, Two Towers was very similar. Even, like, a lot of the dialogue was very similar. It was good. Um, this is the best. And then, how do you feel about Rings of Power, Amazon's Rings of Power? So, I personally like it. I know 90% of the people don't like it, but the reason I like it is because it kind of explains how Mordor kind of formed. You know, earlier I said, oh, I don't like Mordor, but at least as far as the story goes, the lore, like it kind of shows you how it was formed. Because other than, you know, in Fellowship, you know, you just kind of get thrown in there. Oh, here's Mil here's Mordor. It's an evil place, you know, with the ring. But you didn't know how it formed. You didn't know how Mordor got there, right? So this actually kind of explains how, you know, it's a backstory prequel. So that's really cool. Um, but, and I also like, I, now, now, 
visual wise fantastic the armor everything the props they use is is definitely 10 out of 10 for me uh, a lot of people don't like the characters for obvious reasons yeah which i think that was kind of the in the story that kind of the character is probably the weakest point but the actual yeah. the actual tying the, the more yeah that that, mean, the yeah. characters the actors a lot of people don't like the actors you know like I galadriel did, they don't like the girl who plays i did galadriel. not like galadriel i can watch it you know it is what it is we watched but, it pure for pure entertainment and i will say they messed up on a lot of like the lore yeah. in it and so like to me they got a lot of things but wrong. But I think what they got right, though, is the Mordor. I think how they formed it and showed the whatever. I think they landed. I, don't I, know I about personally, that. I personally think they did a good job. But there. I read that they but, got, got a lot of stuff wrong. But anyway. Well, I'm mean, not going to talk about the story, but as far as just how it was formed and the props, I think they got part of that right. But as far as the, the uh, characters and the, you know. I just don't know how that. Is that even. I don't know. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't love it. Now, maybe there's a book like Similarian or something that. Tolkien wrote that explains exactly how Mordor was formed and that completely just destroys my what I just said about the video I don't know but as far as me seeing it with my own eyes that's what I thought it's a way to envision it it's I a guess. it's a good interpretation it was something to watch we'll say that okay yeah will we watch the second part I probably yeah, will because I'll make one, her I'll make her watch it number one but, me and Chrissy and <laughs> Scott we kind of did like our own little watch parties virtual watch parties and we would like film our reactions back and forth watching each episode Classic. and that was the best part honestly of it I can't believe that was over a year ago yeah, yeah. That's crazy. that was the best part of rings of power was chatting about it and laughing about it and being like who's this dude and who is uh sauron who, who is who and being like what <laughs> that was the best part honestly okay anyway um mm -hmm. number six show now we're props. here do you have any middle earth merch all so, right i'll show it one more time <laughs> For the people who skipped ahead in the video. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, we got this sword. I don't remember where we got it. I think it was it, like, was it like a WB shop? I don't know. It's probably somewhere they online. They had a Lord of the Rings shop. It was 26. This thing is huge, though. By the way, the, the edges are dulls. It's not sharp at all. See, the, the blades are dulled on purpose. Yeah. Anyways. Now, the front. Now, you could actually stab somebody with that. So the, Yeah, the, that is sharp. Yeah, that's sharp. Anyways. We used to have this hanging up somewhere, but we had our kid and had to put it, you know, in a garage. So, so these are, um... I've got some extra books. That's pretty cool. My friend Carmen sent me this when she worked at the bookstore, and I was so thankful for her to send me that. The Atlas of Middle Earth. This is pretty sleek. Have you looked at that? I don't know if I've seen it. Or you might have showed me. I think I showed you when I first got it, but oh, how okay. cool is that? Yeah, it's got lots of, like, pretty old maps and stuff. If you're, like, into maps. Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty sleek. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, then we've got this Hobbit. Um, Isengard. Sorry. We're taking the Hobbits to Isengard. Yeah, everybody's probably <laughs> seen that, right? Mount Doom. Okay, and hold on. Mortal. So, I've got this Hobbit art and design book for the, from the movie. Um, Battle of Five, Five Armies. See, and it shows like, here, hold this up. It's heavy. Oh, yeah, this book's really cool. It's like a lot yeah, of the got, artwork like, really good, like, art. from the movies and just... All the crazy stuff. Yeah, I forgot how Gandalf's cool this vision. Is. I haven't seen this, but like maybe once. I know we got it. We didn't really look at it much. But so, man, this is some really good art. Well, man is just like skipping elves, over everything. How they Ooh, did the, the armor. armor. No, I love. Yeah, I love the armor. So that's really cool. Pretty slick. Got that, and then oh, yeah. we've got this. I know I have that's another like one. That's like a movie prop. I've got thing, another right? one. Someone. I've got like, another. Uh, someone. I've got another one. Pictures somewhere. or stickers or yeah, something. Yeah, the like? Lord of the Rings. No official movie guide. We have posters. Oh, the, the movie guide. That's but, right. Oh, there's one that has the posters in it. Yeah. Get the map. Let's go through. This those. was something I got off Thrift Books, and oh, it just yeah. it was like for the from the movie, you know, you the get, Road to Middle Earth. Gandalf and Saruman. Oh, I don't and know how tall he is compared compared to him. So, oh, cool. I thought that was really neat. Just like all of the back and forth here. Hey, we got to see oh, Sam. Oh, there's Sam right there. All the characters. Oh, all the characters. Oh, it, looks, it is like a little synopsis or something of the characters. Oh, there's, your, there's the top two ladies that I mentioned earlier. <laughs> we got Arwen and Galadriel. There you go. There's your boy Aragorn. The Strider. Lady, the Strider. <laughs> the one that every woman... Never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, you ain't never lied, though. Uh, oh, there, Legolas oh, yeah, too. Another, another <laughs> girl. Okay, that love Legolas art. It's got basically all the characters in it. That's oh, pretty man, cool. I'll have to look at that again. And then I've got some little things here that I really like. First off, I've got this, the elven brooch, the leaf. And I had put that on my 
flowers when we got married. And then Ian the Even Star. Star necklace pendant. I don't know where the chain's at. Um, <coughs> bookmarks. We've got Gandalf. With a cheap with one a ring. Cheap one ring on it. Yeah. And I lost the one ring on this one. The R1 uh, and Aragorn. Uh, Golem stole it. <laughs> Smeagol yeah. got in the house and yeah. stole it. Then this is a really neat little bookmark. It's like one ring to rule them all, and it kind of has them inside. Pretty neat. Oh, that one is neat. Yeah. This is an art piece that I got in a book box one time, 2017. Nerdy Post, it says. I don't know. Wow, 2017. Yeah, I've held on to it. That's already a I really like this. Wow. So, yeah. That was, what, six years ago? Yeah, yes. Um, then oh, I got those are cool, yeah. These. Yeah. And then, Blake, what did uh, what'd you bring? So... I'll, I'll start off with, um, oh, yeah. so the key, you know, going back to the hobbits. So in the, well, let me show you, you can see it. Uh, here is, um, the Ark and Stone. The Ark and Stone. Yeah. There's smog in the back. It's just something I have in my room there. It's like a little card. I'll show you some cards. This is pretty neat. It's like, uh, supposed to be the Ark and Stone. It's supposed to be the Ark and Stone. Like yeah. They prism. give you like a little box. See with how it. there's colors in it. You can kind of see it, but I wonder if it'll like, yeah. <laughs> you can kind of see inside. And then, um, oh, these are cool. So, yeah. So this is just kind of like playing cards. It's just the box. This is the box. I like the box. Lord of Rings right. playing cards. You know my nails. They look bad. Here's the one ring, my precious. Here, get real close on it. So you can kind of see the lights kind of shows that there, if you can get Here, to focus. Sure. See? So you can see it right there. It's a custom card. There you it's go. a Magic the Gathering card. Uh, but it's actually a custom card, so this is not a real playable card. But, I thought, but I thought it was really oh, you cool. You got on Etsy, didn't you? Yeah, so th this I thought was really cool because it's, I think it looks better than a lot of the real cards, but it's actual, anyways, you can kind of see the ring. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that one's cool. And then I have another card that's really cool. Um, Gandalf the White, like I said earlier. If I can get it to focus, maybe. Here, miss it. I don't know how to. You see Gandalf? Right here. Yeah. They can see it. There it is. And then, uh... I got my binder, which I've been collecting. If I can... Oh, here it is. First off, I think this is cool. So, we got Frodo right here. Got like a holographic pattern on the front here, but this is really cool. So, these are Magic the Gathering cards that I've been collecting. And it's going to be hard to show this. Um, um, here. Actually, here, if I just do one page at a time. So, here's the front page here. Got so, you can kind of see Arwen. a lot of the cards. So I'll try to flip this. You don't here. have to show exactly. I mean, I'll show like a couple pages, but yeah. Just, this... they, get, they see it. But yeah. So, so you can kind of see. Right there. Where's that one page? <laughs> We're struggling. It's hard um, with the ring light to show exactly what they look like, but yeah, you so. can kind of look up Magic the Gathering. Oh, I wanted the to show the cards. one. So, here's all the land cards. I think this, this is cool because you can see all the. Oh, lands. yeah. It's got like the map. I put them all together with the map there, which is really cool. So, so he's got like a whole, show him kind of like how Pretty much, pages. I have a lot of the cards. There's so many cards in this set. Um, but uh, there's one page I wanted to show him with all the, yeah, this page right here. This has all like the circle art, like the borderless and all that stuff. It's pretty oh, cool. that's cool. You can see the characters are kind of, oh, let's show Tom Bombadil. Yeah, he's really cool. It's a valuable card right here. If I can get the light to, yeah, there it is right there. Anyways. <laughs> he probably couldn't sleep very good. So yeah, there's but a bunch hear. of cards. Okay. Oh, and here's the back of it. The ring right there. I thought the back is really cool. Yeah, I like the ring. I don't much care for the front, but I like the back. Yeah, I know uh, Frodo's looking kind of dark there. He's about evil, but he looks a little evil. Hey, but, if it wasn't for Sam, but, if it wasn't uh, for Sam. Yeah, honestly, this picture right here. Yeah, this is a good example of that. So the ring is tempting him, right? So he's it's corrupting his heart. So that's the whole point of Lord of the Rings. Here, Anyways, that's why he shows evil. And then we've got this map, Lord of the Rings map. It's like a paper map. It's really thin, but I've used it. But in like several... right here. Why does this even exist? Mordor. <laughs> Anyways. You gotta have somewhere that's bad, I guess. Yeah. In fantasy world for the plot. So, yeah, this we I've used in several videos. Like, I use this in my Authentically Easy blog. If y'all ain't seen that, I'll link it. But it's one of my favorite videos I did last year. It has, like, Middle Earth wedding pictures and stuff. So, this is a good prop for stuff. It's cheap. Not it's so actually, it, it, it's not, like, it would poster be material. It's actually kind of a, what do you call this, plastic? <laughs> We, we probably got more stuff other places but yeah but that's the bulk of the stuff so that's it for me what you got hub? so stay tuned we got a lot of uh cool holiday updates coming up soon uh some, some interesting videos that i think will you know highlight the channel i think it will so you, you'll see more of your boy <laughs> i don't know if you want to see more of me or not but hey they love when the hubs pops in uh, for sure 
uh we're definitely gonna do that like tag video i talked about in that well, last I've had, vlog let's see if we can have like a little table here like if i open up the stuff i'm talking about but it's not here obviously we're gonna have some unboxings maybe, okay? maybe like a little thing right here he's yeah. got like all kinds of stuff he wants to unbox of his hobbies maybe not everything but i will say the the christmas the, you know we, we got we got some ideas for um <laughs> They will love you. It's fun. It's so fun. That's, uh, that's all it's I always got. fun. But uh, me. I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. Let's chat below down in the comments as usual. Thank y'all for watching and we'll see y'all in the next video. Bye y'all. Bye bye. Peace bye. out. Peace out. <laughs>